which is the best camera for any photography is one of the most frequently asked questions on my messages. Um, so I have made this one video um, hoping that it will help you all. Um, in order to understand what camera to buy or what equipment to buy, you need to understand the mindset behind documentation. Uh, first of all, you need to be very sure of uh, what you are documenting. What is the case for? Is it going to be published or is it for social media usage or for glamour or for fame? Uh, that's because den photography um, is all about flash photography and flashes, the light source is going to be deciding what kind of pictures you are going to get. So for me, um, flash is the most important equipment and not the camera. It's actually the concept of, uh, it's also called as the reverse concept by den photography school in which we explain that flash is the most important equipment for us. So what are the flashes that are available? If you want to publish your cases clear cut, we have three kinds of flashes. There's the inbuilt flash, that's the on-camera flash. Then you have a ring flash or a twin flash. But if you want a glamour factor, if you want to put um, glamour into your subjects or your process or tabletop photography, we usually suggest the use of soft boxes or uh, we also call it studio light photography. So first you decide what's the case for and then you decide the light source for it. I love using ring flash and inbuilt flash for my posterior cases or full mouth rehabs um, but for my anterior aesthetic cases which are going to be published I use a twin flash, it's also called as dual point flash but if, you, if I want to create a glamour factor in my anterior aesthetic cases or any case I use studio lights, so what do I have for studio lights? I have LN Chrome FRX200, I love it uh, we also have 400-600 watt uh, lights that we use in our studio for our patients' portraits as well as intraoral photography. So you also need to understand that if you are planning to use studio lights like Ellen Chrome, they are actually called third-party flashes. So your camera should be capable of handling third-party flashes. There are many cameras which do not support third-party flashes, so you need to be really cautious about it and try and avoid it if you want to use the studio lights. But if you are okay with using the same company flash, for example, if you have X company camera, X company lens and X company flash, you can well, you can use any camera that's completely fine. But if you're wanting to use Ellen Chrome or studio lights, you have to be um, a little careful when buying the camera and just find out if it supports third party flashes or not. Um, in terms of economics, you must invest maximum number of a maximum amount of money on your flash. According to me, you must go and you must invest around fifty percent on the light source. That's your flash. And the last thing that I want you to be a little aware of, there's something also called as ring light that I really don't want you to buy. A ring light is pretty cheap, um, uh, and it's a continuous light source. It's it's not a flash per se. So what's going to happen is you it, you want to be compromising on your settings, and you're not going to be. Uh, getting good pictures, you're gonna get pictures with shallow depth of field and high noise. That's something that we really don't want to have in our photography. Moving on to the second most important equipment, that's the lens. And we don't have uh, choices, we have uh, only to use a macro lens for photography. Okay, so what macro lens do we use? These are the following guidelines number one, choose any macro lens with higher focal length more than 85 because you don't want to have distortions in your pictures. Uh, number two, we don't want image stabilization in our lenses. That's because we don't want to make the entire system heavy. We want the system to be light because telephotography is single-handed photography. Uh, yeah, so don't use IS lenses. They are also called VR lenses or VC lenses, vibration reduction, vibration cancellation or vibration control. Uh, we don't want these, okay? So I love using non-IS lenses. Um, they don't have image stabilization. Image stabilization is required when we don't use flash. Right, but for dental photography, we use flash for everything be it extra oral, intra oral, or tabled of photography. Flash is to be used. So, IS lenses basically don't have any role in dental photography and documentation, and hence not even suggested. Um, so, but if you want to do um, non flash photography, like a little bit of wildlife outside um, in ambient lighting, you can buy an IS lens for sure. There's one thing that I want you to be careful about. Please buy internally focusing lenses and please buy the same company lens. For example, what do I mean by internally focusing? Whenever you want to focus, the lens is not changing dimensions. And you might have seen lenses which keep on changing dimensions when you focus them. They are called externally focusing lenses. So that's something that I, I really don't like to use because many times if you put a flash in front of your lens, even the flash is going to move and I have seen my students, um, they don't realize when they touch the subject, um, it's a little risky, I feel, and it also loses the wire, the contact between the commander and the flash. So, 
externally focusing less is a complete no-no for me. Um, they are economic for a reason. You need to understand that. So don't try to save on that 10,000 or whatever. I think uh, go for um, the same company lens. Like X company camera, X company lens is the best choice. Uh, moving on to the least important equipment, that's the DSLR, okay? You can buy any basic DSLR, uh, but I feel that you should have Wi-Fi in your DSLR because as soon as you take a picture on the DSLR, it should be seen on a TV or a smart device that's really useful to educate your patients and I do it quite often and convince my patient or educate my patient to get the right treatment done. Mm, if, if you've already got a camera but you don't have Wi-Fi, nothing to worry. You can buy SD cards which have Wi-Fi in it. For example, Toshiba Flash Air is one card that I know of. I used to use iFi Mobi but that has stopped now. Um, but now uh, just need to buy this SD card which is Wi-Fi and download an app for it and you can do the same thing. You can send in the pictures to a big device using that SD card. So this, uh, this, uh, this is all about buying cameras in a nutshell. Uh, I hope you like the video. Um, there's one thing that I wanted to speak about. Um, last year uh, we had collected a lot of relief uh, donations for uh, flood victims in Kerala. Uh, unfortunately, even this year, our uh, country uh, and especially my parent state, that's Maharashtra, is suffering from huge floods, especially where I have my friends and my relatives. There's flooding almost to like 15 feet in some of the places. Some places have 6 feet, 7 feet. And uh, my own family is um, taking the rescue ahead. For example, my, my brother, he has 30 people who's, who's uh, in his house right now, who's giving shelter in his house. Um, and I'm pretty sure that uh, somewhere down the line, um, they might require funds. So if you feel a little bit of sympathy or if you can understand that uh, we require to support these people who are trying to help and volunteer people who are flood victims, uh, if you can donate a bit of money in their account, um, that's their account. If you want to transfer it and help the flood victims, it's really gonna be um, great. Um, the last thing that I want to say is, I hope this video really helped. Uh, we're going to be making a series of video like this, videos like this for you. But if you want to come and learn personally, we do three-day workshops, uh, which includes the complete theory, how to handle the cameras and stuff like that. The second day has uh, hands-on workshops on typhodons, and the third day has clinical photography, outdoor photography, and even drone videography. It's a super fun session. We enjoy the three days completely. Uh, probably you can take reviews from my previous students. Uh, we have trained the who's who of dentistry in India. You name the big names and I'm pretty sure they must have learned it from us uh, in dental photography school by a course called Grayscale Plus. What are the forthcoming programs? Which cities? We are coming to Bangalore, we're coming to Kwanthur, we're coming to Chennai, we're coming to Delhi. Uh, we're coming to Gwalior, Gwalior and our international workshops are going to be at Singapore, uh, Perth and uh, Dubai. Uh, in the forthcoming year, that's 2020, we are also being lecturing at Barcelona in Spain. I'll be really looking forward to see you all somewhere and uh, maybe help you out with uh, any queries that related to dental photography and documentation. If you like this video, please um, like and share it. If you have questions, please comment below and do subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much and be looking forward to seeing you soon. Bye bye.